Alright, what's the first thing we fix? Double letter and <coughs> Then what? William Shakespeare capitalized by W and S. Then what? In the positive. Where? Between oh, after the E and Shakespeare. After the E. Oh, it's the alignment thing. And before the S. Alright, then what do we do? Come, Come, after, play. Come, Come after, after play. Julius Come Caesar. Alright. Okay. Underline. Come after Caesar. Okay, why do we put a comma after Caesar? There's two reasons. Give me one. Okay, it's an apposite. What's the second reason? Do you know? that it's like not the title of a place, not Julius Caesar. It's called the dependent clause. Okay, well, it's not it's not a dependent clause. It's a prepositional phrase. Okay, so um, because of that, anytime you start a sentence with a prepositional phrase that is more than three words, then you want to use a comma after that. Fun fact. Okay. Figs. No. Oh, my calibration is really off today, guys. From? Oh, it is. That looks weird. Article. Right. That. <coughs> it's an adjective. Oh, it it's describing what the story, what type of story, that story. Okay. Uh, story. <coughs> with. <coughs> the. <coughs> wolf. Noun. Job. Were. So what rhetorical ethos. appeals ethos? Okay, we have the credibility <laughs> of Lincoln. What else did you hear in there? <laughs> pathos. I heard some pathos in there too. He talked about sin and founding fathers. Anybody else want to see theirs and share it today? Again, I heard some calls for yours. Yeah, I want to watch Yeah, let's watch it. She says no, let's do it. Okay. I am going to call your name and put you in groups of four. You need to get your story cube that you created. Thursday, and you need to get with the rest of your group, and you're going to make pods with your desk. So you're just going to kind of get in there and kind of scoot four desks together. So those are probably be flipped around to make a little pod. You see how we're going to do that? One person in your group at a time is going to roller cube. Okay, that person should be familiar with who said it, to whom, and what was going on at the time. So if the rest of you aren't familiar with what was going on, they can kind of give you a little background information, and then that should stem a conversation. Okay. So you should all, or at least the individual with the cube, should be pretty familiar with those quotes because you're the one that found those and you know what's going on. I just kind of want you to throw out there if the rest of your group can't guess who was speaking to whom, the plot, and the significance. I want the leader of the cube, the person that owns the cube, to try to start that conversation. Does that make sense? So, Regan, roll your cube. All right, so read us your quote. <laughs> By law, we're required to keep you conscious through the entire procedure you have right to know everything that's happened to you every single day. Alright, so does anybody in the group remember who had said that in the novel? Okay. To whom? To Roland. Great. And um, and what was going on at the time? <laughs> He's getting overwhelmed. Okay. And what's significant about that quote? So then that would stem that conversation. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because you can start going to the different